Hello, welcome back. This is the third video on how to export images and this time I will talk about vector images, how to export PDFs and SVGs. Last video we finished with this code. We basically found out how to export very large images with uh, using a P graphics and also how we can make transparent images, how can we save transparent images. So this code, for example, so we did this before and I show you why it's important um, in terms of uh, storage because we exported first time this image transparent and it was 842 pixel wide. Then I exported this image, which is 3508 pixel. So it was NA4 at 300 PPI and it's already 386 kilobytes. So it's already about six times larger. Of, sorry, um, they are six to eight times larger. Whereas then I exported a file that is 13,000 pixel large. Uh, okay, there we go. 14,000 pixel large. And it's almost 1.5 megabyte. So from here to there, the increase is about 300 times or 30 times larger. So, and this, this image is very tiny. Actually, there is almost nothing inside. Whereas here, it's a very large image. You see it's loading much longer and I can zoom incredibly close to the objects. Um, but the files become extremely large when there are more colors. It's more complex. And then instead of having only 1.5 megabyte, the file maybe is like 200 or 300 megabyte. And that's what happens with TIFF files. TIFF files can be extremely large, especially for um, graphics with a lot of colors. And to avoid that, I use a lot of PDFs. So for example, that's how it looks like in my case, usually. I have a PNG file and a PDF file. So the, this is the graphic from the first video, how to export images. And you can see already this file size is about 434 kilobyte. It's the size is 842 pixels wide, yeah, and it's you can't zoom really en uh, enough inside to see the details. However, when I open my PDF file, I can zoom in as much as I want with a zoom factor of 6,400 percent, which is a lot, and it's still nice and crisp. So it's scalable, and I can use it for any purpose I like, actually. And the file size of this PDF is only five kilobyte. So the difference is, of course, it's about 80 times smaller than the PNG file, but I can print it out as, as much as, um, as large as I want. So the advantage is, of course, or the, the importance is when you have sketches, in my opinion, always save them as PDFs or vector files. And that's what we will do now. If you go to the processing website and you go to the libraries, and there is uh, in the library PDF export. And that's a very useful source. So I suggest you to read this through because there is a lot of um, cases how to make it. So there's like, for example, for single frames, you have for multiple pages without uh, showing it on the screen. Then you have also single frames. Yeah, and then also like single frames from an animation so that you can save a specific um, specific frame that you want. That's what I usually do. And then you have also many frames into one file. And then of course posing while you're recording. So maybe you're doing something interactive and you want to um, and you want to save only uh, at certain instances. Yeah, whenever whenever you're ready. Okay, let's do it. Uh, let's let's make our own PDF writer. Basically, I will show the way I do it because they're kind of maybe my own experience the way I like to do it on my screen and also in my archive. Um, you can see already this is our sketch from the first episode. Oh, there is some error. You can see there is, um, so this is the first sketch that we had in the beginning and we start to save it. Now we want to save it as a PDF. Here we still have um, our key pressed the way we did before with the timestamp and save frame for saving them in the folder images and a small feedback which says saved after the task is completed. Now, when we want to uh, save PDFs, first we need a library. And here in Sketch, you can import libraries. You can also add more libraries. What we need for this video is a PDF export library and also SVG export later. 
So let's do first the PDF. All right, there it is. There is our PDF export already. So the sketch, if you run it, nothing will happen yet. It just only loads in the processing uh, PDF library inside. What we need now is um, telling the code when to record a PDF. And as you've seen already on the processing website, the references or tutorials, um, you saw that you can put also the begin record into the setup. However, I don't like to do this. I actually like to interact with the code. I like to see and test it. And only when I feel like it is the right outcome or the right setting, then I press the uh, S on my keyboard and then it saves the PDF. So let's do this. And for that, we need a switch. Yeah? So first we say a Boolean. A Boolean is a switch and we say uh, it's called record. And it should be false. That means it's off. Yeah? When we have we have the switch now, recording, if you press the button S, it will turn it on. And if it's on, it will start recording the PDF. And it should do this when we say here. So if I press S, record should become true. Yeah? So right now it's false. And if I press S, the switch becomes true. And if the switch is true, so if record if record is true, so I don't need to write this there, then we should say begin record and a PDF. And of course, same as uh, with save frame, we need also the direction of it. And we should call it PDF. Yeah? So I'm saying here now, save it also in the folder images and add the timestamp to it and also add the frame count to it, at which frame count it saves it. Okay, there we go. That's already basically already told the processing sketch to save it. There will be a couple of problems you will see right now. Uh, first of all, if I run it, you can see it says time step cannot be resolved to a variable. The reason is, first of all, first error, we declare the string timestamp in void key pressed. However, the record, begin record, is before that, happens before that. And the string is not yet declared globally. So we need to declare timestamp. We keep it here, of course, because when we press, we want to update the time, the timestamp. But we have to declare it here above first as a global string. So that this timestamp we can utilize throughout the, um, the algorithm, throughout the code, wherever, whenever and wherever we want to use it. Okay, so we have now the string. Let's press again. And you see, we see the code, everything is running. But if I press the button, it says saved. And now let's have a look whether we saved this image. No, we didn't, of course. What we saved is only the PNG file, yeah, which is fine, but it's not what we wanted. Why is it so? Because if we say something, begin record, we also have to tell the code when to finish recording. Otherwise, it continuously does it. That's one thing. So we have to do it after this loop, it's finished. We have to say, please end record. And it should only happen, <coughs> sorry, and it should only happen if record is true. Yeah, because sometimes um, we don't use this record continuously. We only use it when, uh, when we press the key. So it also should activate it only then. And once it's finished, we should also say, please turn off the switch again. Because otherwise it continuously will be on, it continuously will be recording. And that's not what we want. All right, let's run it again. Let's see whether it's working now. So it says saved. Nope, it's still nothing there. All right, why is it so? The reason for that is we have no loop. And, and if I turn off no loop and it's running the code, that's okay. And now I press the button. We should have a PDF right now here. Correct? Yes, we do have a PDF now. Yeah, so that's okay. Everything is working. But if you want to work with this setup, and have also at the same time no loop on, because if it's generative, I don't want to keep it running continuously. 
uh, we have to say the code that please redraw again. Run again the code. Redraw means it starts again from here and then goes through and then it finishes the task again. Because otherwise, if you say no loop, the code is only running once from here to the bottom and that's it. And it doesn't go again. If you press S, sure, it says record true and the code will do it, but it will not run again. It's empty. There is nothing happening. So we have to tell specifically the code, please run the task of void draw again. Run it again and then put it everything into the PDF and save it. So that's how it's working right now. Okay. There you go. And we should have again the PDF and the PNG. Perfect. So both of them working. You can I can zoom in here. Nice. All right. So this is already kind of quite easy. Now I'd like to a bit add a few things. Um, or one more time. I'd like to show you a few things. There is one mistake in this setup. When we compare those two images, one is the PNG, one is the PDF. Then you will realize, for example, and this section and this part, so I zoom in here a little bit and I zoom here a little bit, these areas, they look completely different. Even I saved the files at the same time, it seems, or it seems I saved the file at the same time, they don't record, um, they, don't, they are not recorded in the same way. The reason is, again, that the save frame, when you press the button, it saves the previous image. So it saves this image and when I press the button S, it saves a new type of image into the PDF. So we save at different frames to different images. So in order to avoid that, we have to put the save frame here. After, well, we can put it here actually, after record falls. Yeah? So that everything happens here when we regenerate here, everything, we make everything new with new random values and then we finish the PDF and also we save what is here above into a PNG file, not anymore here. Okay. Um, one thing, let's add some, uh, let's add some, let's add some feedback also, of course. I want to say if the PDF is finished, please tell me PDF recorded. And also I'd like to have a feedback for PNG saved. Yeah? Because if you look at it now, right now, I will just run it and I press S. So first it saves PDF and then just like a half a second later, a PNG. If the files or the code is very complex and there is a lot of graphics and there is quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of uh, colors, then it sometimes takes more time. So you might not know that actually maybe you think the PDF is saved, but your PNG file is not yet saved. So it's nice actually to see the feedback for both files. Or even maybe perhaps you also want to export a TIFF file, then it's even different. Yeah, so those are two different cases. Another thing also I might add here, so I can say, because maybe you find some nice images, so you want more. So we say if key, or if, the, if you press the spa, uh, space bar, then you can just redraw. Okay, so this is nice too. So I can also press the space bar without drawing anything. And if I like it, I just press it and I got something else here. Perfect, right? I think that works very well. Okay, so now how to save SVGs. SVGs are also vector graphics or vector files and they're very useful. There are two differences actually and I will show them once we record one. Then you see the difference of it because uh, it always depends what you want to use. I don't save constantly SVGs. I only save them if I really need them. So let's say let's do it the same way. If you want to save an SVG file, so there is an SVG export. If you don't have it, then you just go and find it. And there it is. You just download it and you go back and import it. SVG, there you go. So now we have an SVG um, library, perfect. And SVG works exactly the same way as a PDF, um, as a PDF recording. So here we already have begin record PDF. 
I just copy it and then I just deactivate and I place below the same thing. <clears throat> I place and I say we want to record an SVG. So it basically asks for the SVG and the file ending should be S SVG. <clears throat> I'm sorry. And here again SVG and let's run it. Now I press the button. That's it. Let's go and check. There you go, we have our SVG file. Now you see there is a slight difference. PDF is just only 5 kilobyte big, SVG is 79 kilobyte. Huge difference. Yeah, so it's almost almost like 20 times the size. So it's perhaps not the best format to do it, and let's maybe have a look. I just opened up in Notepad. How does it look like? That's it, that is the SVG file, and we recorded every single line that we generated randomly with the color and the position in the matrix. Okay, and it's quite long this file. So the more elements you have, uh, the more elements that you generate, the larger the file becomes. Whereas the PDF is super tiny. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so why I save both files? What is the reason for that? What is the benefit? I can show this to you when I use uh, Illustrator. So here we have Illustrator and if I open up um, those two files, you will see the difference. And it's a very simple drawing. So the more, the more details you have, the more complex it becomes. And also if you want to edit it afterwards, it perhaps becomes much slower. Okay, so first let me open this file, the PDF file. And you can see already the PDF file is perfectly cropped already and it appears that there is, uh, there is a mask on it. So if I want to edit it, I can't. I have to basically double click and then I can maybe select the files within the mask. If I want to maybe work with this image, I have to release the clipping masks. And then I get all the images here. So working with the clipping mask is not so easy. Yeah, sometimes depends how we want to edit, how I want to use it. So uh, it does, it works, but I always have to have, have additional steps. Now, if I want to open the, the SVG file in Illustrator, you can see here, Illustrator uh, SVG file is already instantly shows everything and it doesn't have the mask. So these are two differences, it's quite important. The difference is also, it's grouped only. It's not a mask. And that can be that can save a lot of uh, steps of working, especially when you have a lot of objects. And that's why I also like to work rather with SVGs when I plot, because I only have groups and not masks. Otherwise, if I have to explode this uh, the lines, maybe I have to edit something, I have to crop something. It takes just simply too much time. And in uh, PDFs, if there is a mask, I don't see the lines outside. So SVG is always preferable. Okay. Now this is the last uh, last um, video on raster and vector images. So I hope you found this useful, and I hope you could get some insight how I actually work with this type of uh, with images. And if you have any questions or perhaps suggestions, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, the next video will be how to export videos and synchronize the code with music. All right, thanks for watching. Thank you for your support, and I'll see you in the next video, hopefully. Bye.